on today's episode of the Basel Journal, there are three problems with the design for my duck ponding system. So why don't you come with me and let's learn together how to fix this and make this a better system. Let's go. The first problem is, if you remember correctly, the pipe comes into the duckaponic system and then it just does a 90 going down. I thought that that would be sufficient to keep leaves and sticks out of it. I was wrong. Evidently ducks like to pull sticks and, and, and stuff into the water to soften the bark to eat the bark. And as you can tell, it clogs up the system. We finished the system on a Sunday and then I went on road the very next week. And literally within a few days, Barbie told me it was already slowing down and there was something that wasn't filtering right. So I had to come up with an idea to, for something to keep the sticks and the leaves out of it, but to let the little debris get sucked in so it goes into the 55 gallon radial uh, filtration system. So my wife and I brainstormed over it and what we came up with involves using a peanut butter jar. I love these things. I use them for everything around the house. And two soap or shower scruffy pad things. What we're going to do is we're going to drill a hole on the end of this, put a one inch uniseal, stick a pipe inside of that. Inside of the, the peanut butter jar is going to be two showers, Luffy, not Luffy pads, but well, according to the dollar store, they're called deluxe body poofs and they'll be stuck inside of the peanut butter jar. And that's going to keep the sticks and the leaves from getting in here, but still, it's, it's still big enough. It'll allow the other stuff to get through so the filter can handle that. That way, if I'm on the road, if Barbara needs to clean out the system because it's doing what that, you know, slowing down, she can reach into the pond, grab this, unscrew this, take this off, clean it out, put it back in, screw it in. It's simple, easy to do. That's problem number one. This is a one inch uniseal. I have fallen in love with uniseals. It's the easiest way to put a hole in a plastic container to run pipe through and not have it leak instead of dealing with PVC fightings and silicone and everything else. So now the next step is to go ahead and drill a one and three quarter inch hole in, in its top cap so I can plug this in. When it comes to the uniseals, it's imperative that you have the right, you drill the right size hole in order for it to work right. I'll put up a chart which tells you the different sizes for the different unit seals so that way you can drill the right size for whatever size you want to use. So now let's go drill this through and then we'll put a piece of pipe on there, I'll put this on the pipe and then we'll screw this in and then that part number one will be done. So the unit seal just plugs right into that. Just like that. And then the way it's designed is the uniseal is, is just a little bit smaller than one inch pipe and it, it, it's kind of like funnel. It's not straight through, it's funnel, so the closer to the back, the narrow it gets. That's what provides you your seal. I'm in the pool because I had to shift the tubing back to accommodate for the extra room needed for the union joints. While I was at it, I went ahead and tore this apart. That way I make sure it's clean. I put the union, I mean the uniseal on with the cap. This will go through here. Now when Barbie or I need to change it, we just put that on and we screw it. Boom, and it's got a filter. So all I do is tie this again so the ducks don't untie it this time. <laughs> Evidently they know how to untie a uh, clothes hitch. Slowly opening up different ones. There we go. The second problem is whenever we turn the pump off to service it to get the, the clog out of it, because the 55 gallon drum is higher than the duck pond, the PVC pipe that connects the two together basically acts like a siphon and pulls all the water out of the 55 gallon drum, the primary one, and dumps it back into the duck pond. Let's just go ahead and cut this. I'm going to be at least an inch out for the ball cock valve, so we'll just cut that right there. The 
key to cutting anything with a saw. PVC, wood, anything. Long strokes. The longer the stroke, the faster you will cut it. Okay, that problem is solved. Now, whenever we want to service this, all we got to do is come up to this ball cock valve, move it in the off position, and now it can't backflow down into the pump. Problem number two solved. Problem number three. Because of the way that it's all connected together down by the pump, it is not impossible, but extremely hard to take the system apart and work on it. So what I bought was two one inch, I'm not sure what they call these things. Um, basically this will go in one PVC pipe on one side, that'll go in the PVC pipe on the other side, and, and the pump will be sitting here, the pond will be sitting here. When I want to service it, all I gotta do is just unscrew this. Then we can easily disconnect the pump to service the pump instead of battling like I did when I got home on Friday to try to put this thing all back together again. So that'll solve problem number three. Quit trying to untie my shoes. Danny Goose Goose, stop. You're probably thinking, Chuck, they make a PVC cutter for that and it's a lot easier than cutting it. I agree, but I am using the thin wall PVC the problem with the thin wall PVC and that cutter is it bends this and leaves notches on the end of it. So I'm having to cut this. I put things together so well that it took a pair of vice grips and a pair of channel locks to get it apart. Working conditions. Good thing I love them ducks. You taking your dust bath there, Ophelia? Everybody's getting a bath today. Problem number four. Problem number four. And this one's not really a problem. This is just a, an increased efficiency thing. As you notice, that on, the, on the primary pump, I used 90 degree fittings. So I'm gonna replace all those 90 degree fittings with two 45 degree fittings. What it ends up doing is giving you a sweeping bend instead of a hard bend. And that way it doesn't slow down the water force of the suction as it goes through the system. So it should make it function better. This one's not really a problem. This is just a, an adjustment to make it flow even better. So let's get to work. We got our four days after all those upgrades and everything seems to be working really good. I did make one more change I want to show you on the filtration for the uh, submerged filter. So I did change the media because that shower thing didn't work very well. It, uh, the ducks were going down and picking at it and pulling it out. So I had to find something that they wouldn't be able to pull out. So let me show you what that is real quick. The media that I changed out to is basically just a gutter guard. It's this plastic stuff that you put on top of your guards to protect leaves from stuff and getting on it. It's just a, a mesh works perfectly, it folds over, fits in there. They can't pull it out and it does filter stuff out. And because of that, we've had a perfectly good pond over the last four days, very little maintenance to it. So those are our upgrades. They all worked really well. And so until next time, live your own story. <laughs>